everybody! For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another family of vertical blown flutes. We're going to take a listen to the Turkish neigh, to the Bulgarian kaval, and to the Armenian bulul. Now, there are other instruments that fall into this category, but for today, I will only be playing the three. I also want to mention that because we're focusing in on the sound and tone color differences and similarities between these instruments, I'm going to be playing all of them using a Western melody and not playing any of the ornamentation or stylizing that you would typically expect to hear when listening to these instruments being played. So all of that being said, let's go ahead and take a listen. So there you have it, all of the flutes played back to back. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is arguably one of the most distinctive characteristics about playing these flutes, and that's the embouchure. As you saw, I played all of these flutes out of the side of my mouth with what could only be described as a whistle-like embouchure. Now, it's because of that embouchure that these instruments are considered some of the more challenging flutes to pick up. Um, they're just a bit of a challenge to get a sound out initially. So anybody who is really interested in trying these flutes for the first time, you absolutely should. I encourage you to. But just know that it might take a little bit of patience at the beginning to even get a sound because the embouchure is just so different from most other wind instruments out there. Now moving on, the second thing I wanna talk about is the blowing edge of these instruments. And like I say in many of my videos, they're similar but different, and that's absolutely the case for these instruments as well. Now, two things that I wanna mention, the hole at the blowing end of my caval seems to be a bit bigger than a lot of the other flutes, and so I just have to be careful where I place it on my face when I go to play, because it's not always where I think it should be. And then the second is probably the most different looking blowing edge would be on the Turkish snake, because it has this little doohickey on the end of it, and this is the mouthpiece or the bashpar, which is made out of plastic or horn, or sometimes horn surrounded by some acrylic or wood, and it can make them look extra pretty like this one here. And you can also get um, Turkish ne with just the reed with no bash part on the end. So there's options. It just depends on the maker, personal preference, things like that. So the next thing I want to touch on is the fingering systems for these instruments. The Turkish ne typically has six finger holes with one thumb hole. The Kaval has seven finger holes in one thumb hole, and the bulul has eight finger holes in one thumb hole. And as you could hear, you can play a Western melody on these instruments, no problem. But because of some of the extra holes and the way that they're tuned, there's some additional chromaticism and microtonality built into these instruments, which really adds to their versatility. So finally, I have a question for you. You heard these instruments played back to back without any of the ornamentation or styling that makes these instruments sound so distinctive. What did you hear? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. So please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and for listening and have a lovely day.